Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use item or take markers in Reaper. Now, as you probably already know, to create a marker in Reaper, we just put our cursor on the timeline or the ruler, type M, and that creates a marker right here. We could double click it to give it a name. We could add a color right here. Let's make it green. Now we have a marker on the timeline, but it's based on our entire project, not our items or our takes. So you can move it around like this, but if we move our items, the marker doesn't go with it. Because like I said, it's based on the entire project. But if we want to create item or take markers, we could do that as well. Just put our cursor where we want to place one, go to the item menu and choose take, take markers, add take marker at cursor. Or we can just right click over here, go to take, take markers, and choose add take marker at cursor. But the easiest way to do this is by holding down some modifiers. On PC, it's Alt, and on Mac, it's Option and Shift. Hold that down, and we can click where we want to place our item or take marker. Just click, that opens up the take marker dialog, give it a name, let's give it a color like red, and now we have a take marker in this item. So we can move it around just by grabbing it. If we turn on a grid, it's going to snap to that grid. Or we could hold down shift to ignore the snapping. We could double click it to edit it. Maybe change the color. We could duplicate it by holding down control on the PC or command on the Mac. Let's rename these markers. And now we have three take markers in our item. And we could delete them by holding down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and just click them to delete them one at a time. And because these markers are based on items or takes, if we move the item, the markers go with it. Or if we stretch the item, the markers move accordingly. Or if you move the contents within the item, hold an Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and the take markers move with the contents. Now, one of the things I find helpful when working with take markers is to use the item ruler. Let's right click the item. Go to item settings and go down here to display the item ruler. Let's base it on time. And that puts a ruler right down here, which is also based on the item. So if we move it around, the ruler moves with it. Or if we trim it, the ruler trims as well. Or if we stretch it, move the contents, it all works perfectly based on this item. So they kind of work together. If we want to put a marker right on four seconds or six seconds, we could do that by using the ruler along with our tick markers. So it's very useful when dealing with things on the item or take level. And because this works with takes as well as items, we could have different markers on each take of a multi-take item. Let's check that out. I have a project in front of me here where I've recorded a solo guitar part. And we recorded four passes of the performance, known as takes. And we could hear each take just by selecting each one. Now I want to comp this so we could choose the best take for each phrase. 
and we could use take markers to label the best take in each section. Now we could do this by holding down the modifiers and just create them like this and give them a name or description, but it'll be a lot quicker if we use some take marker actions. So let's go to the actions menu and choose show action list. Then we'll search in the filter, take marker, and we'll see right over here, a bunch of actions that are gonna work with take markers to add them, to delete them. But the one I wanna focus on is right here. Quick add, take marker, at play position, or at a cursor. So we could use this action to quickly create on the fly without even naming them take markers. So let's add a keyboard shortcut to it. And now if we hit that keyboard shortcut, while we're playing back our takes, we can mark the best performance for each phrase. Now this could also be used during recording, as we're recording each take to remind us of the best phrases we want to use. But in this situation, we're doing it in playback. So we're going to play this take and use that keyboard shortcut to create a take marker to label the best performance. So I really liked this phrase right here. So we labeled it with a take marker to remember. Now for the purposes of this video, we don't need to play through each take. So let's pretend we are doing that and picking the best take along the way. So let's say we like this take for this phrase. And we like this take for this phrase. And we like this take on this phrase. So we put a take marker quickly using that keyboard shortcut and that action next to each phrase that we liked. So now when we're copying it, we could just split our items by typing S. And now we could choose the takes that we labeled with our take markers like this. So those are the ones we want to use. And if we're happy with this, we can just select all the items, right click, drag, then right click, go to take, crop to active take, and that removes the unwanted takes. Then we can just delete the take markers as we don't need them anymore. So now we have the best performance from those takes. And we use take markers to remind us of the best phrases to use. So that's pretty much it. That's the item or take markers in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.